I'm working on my uh, car for the 2013 AVC and I thought I'd just talk a little bit about the uh, odometry system. So this is a Duratrax cheap chassis. Um, the reason I bought it was it was inexpensive and it had a, a reasonably cool Baja bug body. So anyway, uh, I've got two encoders on the rear wheels and I use that for the odometry system which tells me very accurately over short distances at least uh, where I'm going and what my uh, angular rate is. So let me zoom in and show you the uh, wheel encoders. Here's a close-up of the uh, right rear wheel. And uh, I've printed out this encoder out of PLA. And it's inside the uh, rim here. So it should be a lot more robust than the uh, paper encoders I used on uh, the original tow bore. And I've also printed out this little bracket right here that holds a uh, combination phototransistor and IR photodiode. And then there's a resistor, a current limiting, limiting resistor for the uh, LED inside the shrink wrap. And so this cable goes up to the uh, computer inside the robot. So there's an encoder on the right wheel and the uh, left wheel. And uh, I'm actually uh, triggering interrupts on the Arduino whenever um, I go from reflective to not reflective or vice versa. So I'm getting 32 counts per revolution. Um, anyway, let me go through the math of the uh, odometry and then show you how I actually get the calibration factors. So the math for odometry is pretty simple. Basically, um, this is a little schematic diagram of the left wheel and the right wheel. And this is basically um, halfway between the two wheels. So the distance between the contact point of the left wheel and the right wheel we'll call B, like for baseline, just B. And then DR and DL are the diameters of the left and right wheels. And in general, they're not exactly the same. So if we have uh, an encoder wheel inside our uh, rim that gives us n clicks uh, per revolution, then the distance we travel per click is just the diameter divided by the number of clicks per revolution. And we'll call that C, our calibration factor. So um, in a robot, what you do is you let uh, an interrupt routine keep track of the number of clicks on the, from the right and left encoders. And then periodically, you'll look at those values and so if you take the number of uh, clicks, say, from the right wheel and multiply it by the calibration factor for the right wheel, you get the distance that the right wheel traveled. And the, the left equation is exactly the same. So uh, if you're traveling forward and this wheel moves forward dr, little dr, and this wheel moves forward little dl, then the distance that the center line between the wheels has moved in, uh, say, this direction, delta s is just dr plus dl over 2. It's the average motion of the two wheels. Now, um, to figure out the rotation of your robot, basically you take the difference between the uh, left wheel and the right wheel. So if the left wheel moves forward uh, more than the right wheel, that means that we've uh, maybe rotated to this direction, and this is delta theta. So uh, delta theta is approximately, uh, in the small angle uh, limit, dl minus dr over b, where b is this uh, baseline. And you can see that because um, if you have a case where the right moves a little bit more than the left, then the angle here, theta, is just this distance over this distance um, in the small angle limit. So uh, anyway, uh, for uh, the complete odometry system for your robot, there are three calibration numbers. The calibration factor for the left wheel, the calibration factor for the right wheel, and B, which is the effective baseline between the two wheels. So you can measure the diameter of your wheels to get a good idea for the calibration factors. But B is, is a little bit trickier because, you know, uh, you can use a ruler, but, but where does the wheel make contact? Does it make contact here on the inner edge, the outer edge, or somewhere in between? And then when the car is loaded, things change a little bit. So um, you can get a rough approximation just by holding a ruler up and kind of eyeballing where you think the contact points are. But for real tires... Um, it's best just to uh, start with these rough guesses for the calibration factors and then uh, optimize. So uh, I'll show you how I do. So my calibration approach is to drive the robot on a known course and then uh, modify the calibration parameters or optimize them to minimize the difference between the course that I drove and the reconstructed course from the odometry data. So I'm using a basketball court and here's a, a rough schematic of a basketball court. And I'm actually driving the robot in, in this path and I'm not drawing my uh, robot path on top of the of the uh, 
basketball court paint lines. But what I do is I drive on the paint as closely as I can so that um, at the midpoint of the paint lines, I am right on the paint. Um, and so I know my X and Y coordinates. So I compute the uh, least squared error between the reconstructed path at these points and uh, the known locations from the dimensions of the basketball court. And by doing this, it doesn't matter uh, if I overshoot or undershoot the turn in the corners. And in addition, uh, this path has both left and right turns so that I make sure I capture any uh, non-ideal uh, effects that may only occur in a right turn or a left turn. So anyway, that's the course that I drive. And then now I'll show you what the reconstructed odometry track looks like with uh, the dimensions of the wheels and the, the baseline measured uh, just with a ruler. And then I'll show you a little movie of the optimi optimization procedure and the final uh, data that I get. Thank you.